Hello, welcome to the Winding Brook Sanctuary for Ultra Terrestrial Life. I'm your host, Uncle Wayback. It's uh, spring equinox. 2024, I believe. Bringing some salad back to the bunnage. Just thinking, you know, it smells like 2024. I say that because different instances of this now refer to themselves in, in, in different ways. <coughs> Some of them don't even number themselves at all. Some of them you can just look up at the blue sky and see like the invisible hands of the great clock right through it. Time, you know. Have you ever taken any time to kind of get in touch with the speed of it, you know, the speed at which time moves? I recommend that you do. Um, because yeah, it's wild, you know. It's wild. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, uh, stupid, lots of stupid things happen with Einstein's equation. Um, you know, I've done some of them myself, like making it about love somehow. But what I will say is that the, the, the speed of time it is pleasure itself. When you realise that as well though, you realise you're not just here to make yourself happy, like uh, the, the pleasure isn't that facile, it isn't that kind of pleasure. The, t the, the speed at which time moves it is like the company of the alone, you know. Anyway, I'm going to deliver this lovely stuffage too. A lovely little sluffage, a lover of mine. I love bunny rabbits. I love, I love bunny rabbits. I suppose you're not interested in having any of this just now. Probably scare you, won't it? Here, do you want a bite of salad? Oh yes, a bit of rush. Very good, sir. Very good. I'm going to put the rest over, over at your bunny station, okay, mate? So what have we got for you this time? Well, I'm on Lent, so I'm in the middle of something. So there's a bit of that. Um, something of, of a result one day, um, when I felt like we are recording some things about peace and such. Um, it's complex, my relationship with Christianity. Um, I sometimes think of a kind of joke where if I, if I'm, if I am a kind of Christian, I'm an X, X, X gen somehow. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this, except to say that one of the things I was worried about um, this Lent was was being converted actually because I, I I read the Pope's um, speech or whatever and uh, I was quite moved by aspects of it so I was a little bit worried I'd come out of this like born again or something. Um, how I'm feeling at the moment, as I say, it's not over yet, is that I'm more likely to convert you than you are to convert me which is to say um if christianity like stepped up to the word of its lord and um 
it was able to kind of honor and acknowledge contributions like um, Rosicrucianism and, and even things like, um, you know, Crowley's stuff, but, but basically the Rosicrucian kind of current, if it was able to actually like bring that kind of potency into its fold, you know, I mean, there, there's certain ways, if it was, you wouldn't be able to say you weren't, but it's not, so I'm not, you know. So there's that kind of stuff. There's a bit of um, stuff that's a kind of hangover from the last video I did. Things that I felt like I wanted to clear up or make sure that I've said. A lot of this is really just stuff that I want to make sure that I've said to some degree. I'm hoping to do much better things in future. Things that I think are better, probably mostly in book form, something like that, um, but I like the idea, well, basically the, the way I feel is that I need a kind of whole bunch of crazy, weird honesty, like, behind me, not that I've put it behind me, it is behind me and it's able to back me up, um, For some reason I'm thinking of something, I, I was reading a little bit about Crowley and the Magical Diary because I'm, I'm really quite interested in that. And there's something he, he says in one of his books, it might be somewhere in book four, concerning like um, how you should treat your Magical Diary, which I, I'm, not, I'm not scientific about my magical diary and, I, and this is partly where this idea of obliterature is coming from um, because I actually do think there's a value in letting it take you some way towards literature I mean I mean Crowley does um, mention something like that once or twice anyway he says like if you're not able to achieve some kind of result that satisfies you in terms of quality of work or writing in your book then the then the, the demons are just going to feast on you. you you're not going to be able to you won't have anything you don't have anything to fight with you don't have any power so it's saying what you need to say, getting things out of the way, what you put behind you doesn't go anywhere, it becomes part of your power. That's what I'm telling myself somehow with this. So there's things like, um, I, I, I was a little disappointed with the countercultural or subcultural response to um, the pandemic and all of that. Um, there was just too much delusion there and too much, too much stuff that for me distracted from any efficacy it might have, apart from the, the very simple efficacy of just providing a kind of outlet and, and being a form of, 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 of resistance just by resisting the so-called dominant narrative um, if there is in fact one, you know? Don't know really. So I became a little bit disheartened and, and disillusioned with um, you who I have pledged my allegiance to. I mean, uh, you know, my people, my crew, one of whom I am who... But it's... I'm glad to have done that, 
um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and all of that. It's coming back around to me. Now, now I'm ha having a, a look. I'm reading an interview with Peter Lambourne and Wilson Hakim Bay. And I'd read something when I was in a bad mood from him not so, not so, so long ago when I was kind of suffering from this disillusionment. And, and uh, <coughs> I felt there was something futile and sad and almost... Not despicable, but I can't find the, the the word there. A bit like what um, cunts, like posh cunts and straight right people think of like hippies and shit or whatever, you know, or poor people or whatever. That kind of distaste, you know, for something that they just haven't got or have got a little bit wrong. I felt a bit of that towards my fellows, my loves, like, my peeps. And they've come through it. Um, he's amazing. And it's been helpful to start looking at a bit of the situationist stuff as well. Um, so anyway, I mean, part, what, one of the things with the the great subculture, like the the kind of quieter or more underground, it's not really quieter, is it? But the more underground side of the great conversation or whatever, is you know there are certain things that they just don't see, they just won't see, they can't fucking see. They're blind because they think that they can see, you know. Um, and so there's something of the underground that's always going to be underground. There's something of subculture which is always going to be sub. So it's it's not submissive, it's, it's subconscious in a way. <clears throat> because it's anarchic, you know, it's organised by well, whatever things really do get organised by, you know. So you can go against stuff, but but it should. I I feel it's it, it should be done more like a, a kind of a, a love act, basically, an act of love. You go against them in the sense that you are holding yourself against them, in a way, we're there for them, you know. And in fact, we're there for them in ways they just have no fucking idea about. And that makes me a little bit emotional sometimes. So they can continue to fucking... I don't know, you know, it's like with God, I mean, wh when what is high really recognises what it's standing on, it lifts it up. And that's not because what it's standing on is low. And it's not because what, you know, is standing on it is high. Anyway, I mean, you, 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 you get the kind of picture, feeling... This is this is Winding Brook. So this is our little Winding Brook. It's lovely and babbling at the moment. Gentle. In winter, it becomes a bit of a massive, muddy kind of torrent. And in a really bad year, it can completely dry up. All, all we have left is the um, what Jimmer calls them. Well, the rocks, really. The, the bedrock. Well, I guess I'll leave it there and I'll see you about the place. I might put a bit of music in this one too, um, but I'll tell you about that later when I'm in front of my gorgeous, beautiful, fantastic machine. You know, because it's, it's not like I don't have anything against 
machines. It's just there's just certain words and certain metaphors, but you know, we know what we know. You know, peace and lovage. Catch us later. The discreet is that which makes the continuous appear discontinuous. Both continuity and discontinuity are illusory. There's something about discretion which is real, <clears throat> which is of the truth. People who are involved in the, in the fantasy that they are rich. People who are involved in the fantasy that they are rich. People who are currently involved in the fantasy that they are rich. Not posh people, that doesn't have much meaning anymore. People who are involved in the fantasy that they are rich. <clears throat> And um, I'm sorry, and I, I acknowledge that I'm in pain and hurt and a little bit twisted. <clears throat> and um, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm not blaming you. My fault for attracting the fly. It's nature by which it lost interest. My fault for attracting the fly. It's nature by which it lost interest. It's nature to lose interest. My fault for attracting the fly. It's nature to lose interest. Obscure I mostly just wanted to say <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Finishing off a bumblebee's breakfast. We little fire ants finishing off a bumblebee's breakfast.
done anything, Phil? <laughs> yes. Hopefully I'm visible here, yes. I experienced some peace today. Like, real peace. And so I wanted to say something about that. One of the things that struck me about it was that I I couldn't measure it. I was thinking about something I read. Um, someone once asked an angel for uh, a certain amount of space, which I thought was quite a nice thing to say, like three cubic feet or something. Um, and they were doing magic and uh, the magic worked and they felt themselves in the presence of this cube of, of peace. Um, I couldn't measure this peace that I felt and that I still feel uh, because it, it doesn't have boundaries. Um, but I know I will s slip from my having it in my gripless grip. Um, That makes it, that, it, that is immeasurable, makes it small, like small enough to be here. Really nice, good, beautiful feeling. Um, completely impeccable, untouchable, immaculate and yet uh, just completely here, so in, in that particular sense really unalarming and ordinary um, and one of the ways I got there this morning were, was by writing really but what I'm writing is um, part of my practice for, for Lent um, so I'm, I'm meditating every day um, and I'm not eating certain f foods, um, no, most notably meat, um, although I'm having some fish on, on Sundays. Um, but it's a curious thing, um, I'm mostly vegetarian most of the time anyway, um, but I, I haven't craved meat for a while like I've craved it this Lent um, it's been quite strange um, but I guess sometimes when you f forbid yourself things um, that you, your desire can become in inflamed um, but also there's something about eating meat which is um, 
let's just say mysterious and uh, difficult. I'm also reading the Bible, the King James Version, and I, I just finished today the, the, the Gospel of John. Um, that's the one I felt like reading. Um, last year for Lent, I read the Shurangama Sutra. And they will work together really well for me. Um, Buddhism and Christianity, or, or, or what those things are to me, how they appear to me in my limited understanding. In my limited understanding, but in my knowing them. Um, In my, in, in my knowing them, uh, in my engaging with them through through works, literature, but in, encountering something unmediated, um, the, 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 there's things that live about books of spirit. Uh, difficult terms and things, but you know what I'm saying. One of the things that I thought today was like, like it surprised me reading the, the Bible or, or reading the Gospel of, of John, um, how much it's touched me at points and uh, how good a, a, a book or, or a chapter this is um, uh, I was kind of force fed the Bible not that I didn't enjoy aspects of it when I was young because I, I went to a Christian school um, complexly Christian kind of upbringing as in not really but kind of um, anyway I, I also read mostly Old Testament stuff um, when I was a bit kind of crazy in my early 20s smoking a lot of dope what I hadn't done is given it proper time as part of uh, practice. Um, and that's something I first was conscious of doing, first really properly did last year with the Shurangama Sutra because it specifically requested that I treat it like that. I mean, there's like some kind of an introduction which says about, you know, this book is a, is a a holy book and you, you should treat it as such so you know if you're keeping it with other books well, well maybe don't keep it with certain other books but if you are keeping it with other books like put it on a higher shelf or whatever basically you know it's it's like this with anything but it's particularly like it with holy things, if, if you don't approach them with whatever respect means to you, um, you, you, won't, you won't get it, you won't be able to read them, you won't really be reading them. Um, and a similar kind of thing happens sometimes with things that not everyday things that other people write, um, particularly poetry and stuff, I mean if you don't surrender to, I mean hopefully the person who's written the poem is possessed enough by something to have been compelled to, to so, so in themselves they are perhaps writing in a way that they might not quite understand or accept and so then so, so th that's the kind of state that you of surrender that you, that you have to put yourself in. I mean, that's where poetry happens, and that's where um, religious texts come to life. And I, I realise I'm really quite a religious person, although I'm not Christian. I'm not Buddhist. I, I'm not a member of any particular religion. Uh, um, but it is religion. What I feel, um, 
it's not uh, it's not spirituality, which tends to be more of a substitute for that. Um, it is magic. Um, and, and probably that's the reason why I'm, I don't know, it's complex. There's, there's complex reasons, uh, some of which are emotional, um, that I can't be brought into any kind of fold. Um, And some of some of it's pragmatic because what what religion means is, is uh, say tying together, um, and it's just the, the things like humanism uh, and like the liberal kind of ideas and, and mindset aren't aren't it either. They're not not su sufficient um, to tie us together. The only thing that can tie us together is uh, the way we actually belong together. Freedom, truth, anarchy. Uh, anarchy. Um, one of the things I thought today was that like East and West, Buddhism and Christianity, whatever and whoever, I don't know. One of the ways it made sense to me today when I was trying to say like, I, I need both of these things. There's a lot else that I need as well, but there's some things that, uh, I don't know, you know, maybe there's some things that are really necessary and they are reality and truth, whatever those things are for you. Um, for me, like, Buddhism is better at reality and there's something in the figure of Christ and in hearing him speak, which is truth um, for me. Feeling truth, truth is a is a kind of feeling that I have, or a feeling that I get. Um, that's how I know it's truth, but that also is the truth, kind of, in, in a way. Um, <coughs> it's difficult, but um, it's interesting that kind of Christ is associated with r reason through that word logos. Um, and what's it struck me about reading John is that the, the reason is completely confounding at points, um, but also when it's most concrete, it's just like it's just right. If you look at the um, section, the chapter with the adulterous. Um, you see what a brilliant um, teacher, to some degree. Uh, or I was, I'm going to say I was going to say rhetorician then, because but that, that's interesting. Um, one of the other things I was thinking. Sorry, this is just rambling. I'm just going to ramble a little bit. Was that the figure of um, Pilate in? the Gospel of John kind of represents reality for me um, when he says what is truth, you know, to for me that's he says that just after Jesus saying something like um, you know, all all who hear my voice know, know the truth, something like that 
or are of the truth. Uh, Pilate hears Jesus for me, um, and that's why he says what he says. Uh, and that that's reality, like, um, Thomas doubted and actually got to, like, poke his hands in Jesus' wounds and, like, feel inside his, his wounds and stuff. Um, and it, it, it's funny because Christianity is, rightly so, often derided a, 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 as, as a religion of blind faith um, because it's talking about something, someone that you no longer have the opportunity to meet in the flesh. Um, the truth is, is the Holy Spirit, and, and so you have to meet it in your own flesh, um, which complicates the literal truth of things. So you don't have to take anybody's word for anything. Um, that's what the word is. Um, it's strange how the Gnostic kind of heart of it gets ripped out. Um, or just, you know, the magic of it. Um, gets lost um, because the, the, the rights become something more like habits or, or for other people um, exoticisms and things and I think that piece I know, I know that piece that that I feel, that peace that I felt, that is, you know, enough to make me weep. Um, that's the Holy Spirit. But the reality of it is that it's not that easy to hear, and yet there's no talking over it, there's no there's nothing louder than it. There's nothing that can drown it out. And yet it's really hard to hear. Somehow it's also hard to hear. And it's difficult to feel. Because of... It's difficult to feel it's difficult to feel anyway, because it's, you know, like, strong emotions. Not, not that it is strong in a kind of overwhelming way. It's weirdly underwhelming. It's difficult to feel because of the state of the world, and because people don't feel, or people feel, people don't feel peace. People don't feel uh, truth. And the reality is that we need uh, practices and techniques in order to be able to hear, which is almost the same word as feel, uh, truth, basically. And um, Buddhism's really good at that. And the Shilangama Sutra is really good at it. It's like, if you think about God, right? And you think about what it would take to say something about God, or to do something about God, Uh, 
I don't know, if you, if you understand the um, impossibility of that, then you understand um, the brilliance, the absolute brilliance of, of Buddhism's approach to the truth. And that's what, reality, that's what reality is or what reality means. It's, a, it's an attitude or orientation towards um, the truth. And I'll, I'll shut up. I'll stop and start again and change tack and say one last thing I was thinking of saying. Which is that cur this, the curious phrase, hello, um, consensus reality. Uh, So, I mean, you've got to think about that, think about that in terms of democracy, like, uh, what, what's going on in, in the world that you haven't consented to? Probably quite a lot of shit, right? Obviously, wars and all kinds of um, lesser crimes, you know, the thievery, the thievery that is kind of sy systemic, all those fucking systemic bullshits, racism. I remember seeing like, um, looking up at the stars and seeing this line of fucking fuck knows what's like coming across and uh, they that that was uh, whatever his name is I don't want to say his names fucking string of satellites SpaceX or whatever I never consented to them <clears throat> to that it's it's a lie, right? All of that stuff, are, you know, I'm not denying that it's there, that those things are up there in space, that the war is over there. And, you know, whenever it's over there, that's not a very far away over there, wherever it is. But it's, it's lies. All of it is lies. And there's something peculiar about the truth in that it's something that you have to consent to. Um, and yet obviously, you know, it's gonna be what it is and do what it doesn't do with or without you. <clears throat> I think one of the reasons why we still need magic um, is, is to make sure, sure that no one's lying, basically. Obviously there's lots of people lying. Um, And there's lots of stuff that's real, that that are that are that is a realised lie. And one of the things that we actually do have to be careful of, we, um, you know, it, the truth, nature, life, the rest of it isn't in danger from it. We're in danger from our own bullshit and the bullshit of others, and. It's, it's possible, but when you know what possible is, possible is 
out the fucking window. Um, it's it's not impossible either, but it just, it just doesn't really mean that. It doesn't mean shit. Um, so we're, we're not, it's not happening. That, that future in, in, in which we encase ourselves in our own wall of lies, in, in which we can't consent to any of it, that's not happening. Um, so, but we actually have to then resist because we have to, we have to fight for, for our right to consent to things um, and for, for that to, to be the, the truth and, and what's, what's real is what we, what we agree on. Um, and the only thing we're going to be able to agree on is that which is founded on what we don't have to agree on. And that's the fucking... That's anarchy. That's what anarchy means. It means freedom. It means at fucking base. If freedom's not there, then it's just another fucking house of cards that's going to crumble. And so bring on the fucking great winds and bring on the fucking so-called cards flying everywhere. Um, and, and bring, bring on the, the, the peace within yourself. Keep the peace and, and let the peace keep you. Keep the peace, or let the peace keep you. Ah, uh, I should probably research this, say this another time, but uh, just while it's on my mind, I'm thinking about that kid who. Um, immolated himself in front of the Israeli embassy, I guess, in America. Um, I watched the video. Uh, there was Someone posted a video, um, and I, I thought it was going to be his original video, but it was just um, a selection from it, so I didn't actually have to watch him burning, um, which I was quite pleased about, um, but it felt wrong to not watch it once I'd seen I had the option. Um, didn't want to watch it, uh, but I made myself um, watch it, and uh, I thought maybe I would just turn away. I wanted to hear him speak, I wanted to hear what he had to say before. He set himself on fire. Um, and I heard that, and I heard, you know, uh, it showed that, and then it showed him um, kind of fumbling for the, the match or whatever. Um, and then it was like the camera had shifted to one side, and you could see the flames and hear him screaming crying out, free Palestine, as, as he burnt to death. Uh, and uh, I, I can still hear that and feel that. Um, and I, I felt like I owed him that. Um, and... Um, people are not really sure whether that kind of protest makes a difference. Um, I, I personally have been deeply impacted by that form of protest. Um, I, I, I first uh, 
came about. The, 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 I, I don't know the names of these people, I'm sorry. The famous Thai monk who um, kind of kicked the whole thing off. Um, and a friend of mine online who had a kind of um, it related ex experience, kind of ex that, that helped put me in touch with it in a kind of slightly second hand but at the same time really visceral way I, I really felt it all already I really felt the passion and the uh, distress of that act I, I, you know I mean I, 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 maybe I've been suicidal myself anyway before um, but there's suicidal and then there's really making something of your death, whether it's suicide or not. And um, those people really made something of their deaths. And in a way, that's what uh, I feel like I'm trying to do with, with my art and stuff. Um, is to, to kind of burn myself um, up but obviously um, well obviously and, and, and not there's um, you know where literal metaf metaphorical whatever it doesn't it doesn't really mean that much um, whether you burn slowly in a apparently non-physical way or whether you um, literally set your body on fire um, there can be uh, uh, the, the meaning of, of both those acts can make them equivalent in the same way that the meaning of self and other can become equivalent and there is no self and other then when the, those kind of equations, whatever is on either side of them, isn't there anymore. Whether it's self and other, or literal, metaphorical, or any other. Anyway. He made a difference to me. Um, and I used to think back in the, when the Gulf War was going on, I was like, why aren't they plastering? Why, why isn't every newspaper filled with photographs of dead bodies um, until this is over, until this is done? Why is anyone saying anything else, talking about anything else? Obviously, uh, that's a little bit naive or distressed, and it doesn't quite work like that. People get desensitised, and that's a big part of what's going on. And probably there's a lot of people who are even desensitised to um, to the act of this young man's um, burning himself alive. Um, if you, you can you can hear um, you can hear what it feels like in his cry, and you can feel um, what's, I don't know what the name of that feeling is. I wouldn't say. wouldn't say anything. I better not say anything there. There was... I'm sure there's a piece to the act, whether or not he was in touch with it at that exact moment. Um, I heard his suffering. I heard his passion. Um, and I know there's a piece in that.
and there's one thing to show the victims of war who literal victims people who had nothing to do with it apart from being in that area at that fucking time and then there's something else when someone makes them an intentional uh, casualty of war um Like, there was two articles I saw, one was kind of factual and then afterwards they were kind of making a bit of a big deal about his background and his beliefs and the fact that he was an anarchist and stuff. Um, and basically kind of smearing his character it seemed, it felt like, like they were saying that the, uh, kind of demeaning the value of the act by casting, um, Aspersions casting doubt upon the the quality of, of this young man's um, his integrity, basically. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't get more fucking integral than that. No matter how much he must have been suffering, and no matter how much how how distressed he must have been. Uh, But you know, we all feel something of that, we can understand it, and uh... People don't understand what anarchy means. Um... People don't understand so many things. <sighs> anyway, bless you, brother. Hello. This is my new toy. <laughs> I love her so much. I love them. It's the UDO um, Unidentified Dancing Objects Super Gemini. And um, maybe I'll say a bit more about it in future episodes, but um, I wanted just to introduce it because I'm planning on using some of the um, 
bits and bobs that I've recorded over the past month or so that I've owned it um, to accompany some of the uh, video little bits and bobs of, of nature. Um, what to say about it briefly? It's designed in Bristol and made in the UK, which is quite important to me. It's the it's quite an investment. Um, nearly four thousand euros. Um, I don't actually earn any money. My wife is the breadwinner, but um, I've been working really hard on the house, and um, we got some quotes for some work, but the guys never come to do the work. So I've done it myself. Started doing it. Haven't finished yet. Um, so, I, but because they quoted for it, I had some idea of how much money we were saving us, and so the work nearly killed me in certain ways as well, um, and taught me a lot about not getting too angry uh, when you're by yourself and you're doing difficult things. Um, but anyway, I, I felt okay about rewarding myself because um, I accomplished enough last year. And so this was this is my reward for for working hard last year, um, and I uh, I spent quite a lot of time before I decided that that this would be it, and um, something about something about seeing the videos and things like that. I, I don't know all that much about synthesizers, although I've been into electronic music since I started smoking dope. Um, 25, 26 odd years ago um, and previously I owned like a couple of little Korg Volkers like little people's synths just less than 200 euro analog synthesizer things which are a lot of fun but this um, this is the real deal uh, proper job I wasn't sure when I, I, w I had to wait five months or something for it to turn up and so there was quite a lot of pressure on it and then when it did turn up I had two weeks to decide whether or not they were staying um, and I wasn't sure um, and then I was <laughs> so I mean uh, you, uh, you might not hear it on YouTube really the, the quality uh, uh, and you might not be interested in these kind of things so it might make no sense to you and you might not even be able to hear what is fantastic about this. Um, briefly there's a, f a few things uh, it's just it, it's, it's got it's got kind of digital oscillators FPGA field programmable gate arrays blah blah basically high quality digital oscillators and then the rest of it's like analog, and um, it's built on or designed on this principle of duality. So it's got it's got these two synths basically inside the one synth, two sets of controls which are duplicated. So you've got two layers, or or you can split the keyboard, or or do all that kind of stuff um, and you've got all, all the controls nearly all the controls are just right there ready for you to just play with and it's got polyphonic aftertouch um, keyboard as well and this nice big ribbon um, and it's just there's something about um, I wasn't sure for a little while because there's certain limitations more limitations with a hardware synthesizer with most hardware synthesizers than, than you have on the computer but um, I, I compared it to some of the best quality plugins I've got and I'm on Linux so that's basically just some really great stuff by Yugi and things and um, there's it might not be obvious obvious but it's you can feel the, the difference I can feel the difference and sometimes this just delights me really really delights me and I've been playing with it and then just last night I listened back to some of the stuff I've been playing with and it's you know I can't really play keys yet but 
this will help because I mess around on this nearly an hour most days. Um, but anyway, there's a quality that it has which is just a little bit alive. Um, it sings sometimes in in ways that purely digital things can't quite seem to, even though they can, they can't somehow. Um, but one of the things that really makes this special, it's a really good headphone synth apart from anything else, and I play it on headphones quite a lot, so that's good for me. It's got this binaural signal path, so that's like a, a deeper layer of duality. Each um, synthesizer voice has a binaural signal path, potentially, if you want to use it, and that goes right down to the deepest level from the phase of the oscillators and stuff, so you get this really rich stereo image, but it, it's more than stereo, it's, it's like binaural. Um, I mean, it is stereo basically, but because it's just, because, but, but because it's like built right in to the base of things, it's like more than stereo. It's really rich and lovely, and I don't know if you'll appreciate it, and maybe you'll be annoyed that I've put like weird electronic music over the nice nature videos. Um, what I'm thinking with this now video is that I'm just gonna like do something... I've got like three hours or so of stuff that I've recorded since the last video I did and I don't know if I can edit it together into something blah. But I'm gonna try um, and that's what's going to have the music on it and then maybe I'll just upload the other stuff as, as, as I archive it for myself which is as my kind of video diary for this year not something I do every year, I might not do it every year but I'm doing it this year so I might, I might, I might do that, there might be two kinds of videos that I release this Spring Equinox 2024 something what I'm doing right so I won't go on too long but I, I've got no idea what I'm doing but I do enjoy doing it Uh, 
Motherfucker, whether you like it or not, I like it. I really like it.